What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on the final video in our series of the SSI Enriched Air Nitrox Program. And in this Impendex video, we're going to be looking at all the calculations you need to know before you go out and dive nitrox. Now with that being stated, please make sure you're seeking out proper training from your SSI Enriched Air Nitrox instructor. Simply use our videos as a study guide to help you pass your final exam. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the final video of our nitrox program. So the first formula that we're going to look at today is how do we calculate atmospheric pressure? And there's several different formulas that we can use here, but they all basically work the same way. Now, whether you're in salt water, fresh water, or you're even part of the metric crowd and want to use meters instead of feet, you can still basically use the same formula by simply changing one variable. For salt water, it's simply depth divided by 33 plus 1. For fresh water, it's depth divided by 34 plus 1. And for the metric crowd, it's all depth divided by 10 plus 1. But let's look at the salt water calculation depth divided by 33 plus 1. If I simply take a depth of 33 feet and I divide it by 33 feet, I simply get 1. And then add 1 to it, I'm simply going to get 2. And that 2 represents the atmospheric pressure at 33 feet. Now the next calculation that we're going to look at is how do you calculate depth from atmospheric pressure? This is just the reverse of what we just did. We simply take our atmospheric pressure where you're going to minus 1, which is the constant atmosphere here at the surface. We're going to times it by 33 and that will give us our actual depth. So if my atmospheric pressure say is 2, I simply minus 1, which will give me 1, times that by 33, and you'll see that 2 atmospheres of pressure is simply 33 feet. Now the next calculation that we're going to look at is the maximum operating depth. And there's only two variables that you need to actually calculate this. You need your maximum partial pressure that we don't want to exceed and you need your blend or your mix in a decimal format. Let's say that my maximum partial pressure is 1.4 and the mix or the blend is 32%. We simply take 1.4, divide it by 0.32 and that's going to give us our ATA. We simply convert ATA back into depth and as you can see for a 32% blend, not to extend or exceed a 1.4 partial pressure of O2, our maximum operating depth is 111 feet. Now the next formula that we're going to look at is how to calculate the partial pressure of O2 of any blend at any depth. We simply take the percentage of the blend, say we got 32%, that just simply calculates to decimal 32 or 0.32, and we are going to multiply it by the atmospheric pressure. So let's say I'm taking 32% down to a depth of 33 feet, which is two atmospheres. I simply take 0.32 times it by two, and that's going to give me a partial pressure of oxygen of 0.64 at a depth of 33 feet. Now the next formula that we're going to look at is the best mix formula. This is how we can determine what's going to be the best mixture for the depth that we're going to. Once again, there's only two variables that we need. We need our maximum partial pressure of O2 that we do not want to exceed, and we need our depth already calculated to atmospheric pressure. So let's say I want to go to 100 feet and not exceed a 1.4 partial pressure of O2. I simply take 1.4 and divide that out by depth in atmospheric pressure. So at 100 feet, my atmospheric pressure is 4.2. And as we can see, at a depth of 100 feet, not to exceed a 1.4, the best blend or the best mix is going to be 34%. Now this last calculation that we're going to talk about is the equivalent air depth and this is where we can use a standard 21% dive table to work any nitrox blend out there. And we can actually calculate how long our bottom time should be or our no decompression limit should be simply by using the 21% chart. Now as I put it up here I want you to try to memorize the best you can this formula. We're going to start with the fraction of nitrogen in the blend. Up to this point, we've been focusing on oxygen. Now we're actually going to be focusing on the nitrogen partial pressure. So we take the fraction of nitrogen and we're going to divide it out by the standard fraction of nitrogen in standard breathing gas, which is 79%. Then we're going to take our depth and we're going to add 33 to it, which is a standard atmosphere. We're going to put all that in brackets and then we're going to minus the constant atmosphere from the surface. So a basic formula here, let's say that I was going to be diving 32% at a depth of 100 feet. I simply plug in the numbers. I take 0.68, which is the fraction of nitrogen, and I divide out 0.79 from it. Then I take my depth of 100 feet, and I add 33 to it. I work that number down, and I'm going to get 0.86 times 133 
work that on down and I'm going to get 114. I'm going to minus the atmospheric pressure from it. And as you can see, diving 32% at 100 feet is the equivalent to diving air at 81 feet. So guys, there you go. That is the appendix section of your SSI Enriched Air Nitrox uh, program. I really hope this series helps you out to pass your final exam. And please, once again, do not use this video nor any of the videos in this series to let you go out and dive nitrox. Make sure you're seeking out your local SSI Enriched Air Nitrox instructor to get proper training. Simply use our videos as a study guide or a view guide to help you pass your final exam. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed the videos. If you got any questions, drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer those questions as best I can and as quick as I can as well. I am going to drop you a ton of links on every single one of these calculations that we did and even a link on the magic circle itself to help you understand these formulas are very easy to do if you simply use the T formula or what we call the magic circle. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for this series. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you in the next video.